Hello, I'm Carl Seibert. Today, we're going to look at working with metadata in Photo Mechanic. Now, Photo Mechanic is a very powerful program. I've already noted that for professional photographers when working in a files and folders world, it's probably the most popular photo editing and ranking and IPTC metadata authoring application that's out there. And that popularity is based on good reason. It's just a really good program. It's very efficient. It's very powerful. It does all kinds of things. It does so many things even with metadata that we aren't going to be able to cover them all in this video. And we're not going to cover all the other operations that you can do in Photo Mechanic or how a lot of the tools work. We're just going to look at metadata. Now, at the beginning of a workflow, in Photo Mechanic or pretty much any other browsing opera, any other browsing application, you're probably going to start out looking at pictures on a camera card. And the first operation is going to be to move those pictures or some of those pictures to your local computer. Now, we're just on a folder on my desktop, but we're going to pretend that we're on a card because it looks exactly the same. So we're saying that we're going to select all of these photos, and we're going to deselect a couple of these that are duplicates. And we've done that little bit of editing straight from the card. And now we're going to go ahead and copy the pictures. Now the Command or Control Y on the keyboard will bring up the copying dialog. This dialog is also available under the File pull-down in the main menu. And right at the top, we're ready to work with IPTC metadata. We can click this first option, and we're going to apply IPTC stationary to the copied files. We click the adjacent button, and it brings up the IPTC stationary pad, which I'm going to clear for the sake of clarity. Sorry about that. We're going to go ahead and load the stationary pad with our Joe Photographer template. We click on the lightning bolt button at the lower left in the dialog which is the photo mechanic snapshot function. And I leave you to ponder for yourself why the snapshot function has a lightning bolt as its icon instead of some more snapshotty thing like a camera. It's just a mystery. In any case, it's one click. We simply choose from the dialog the template that we want to apply, and it loads it into the IPTC stationary pad. The way the pad works is whatever is loaded into it gets applied to any picture that you apply it to. And you can see in the pad that there is a button that says Apply Stationary to Selected. That's not what we're going to do here. We're in the middle of copying these photos. So I'm going to come back to the stationary pad in a bit, and we'll go into its operation in more depth. But to suffice to say for the moment that it's how we apply metadata to a lot of photos at once, and we've loaded it with the Joe Photographer template. And whatever you load it with, it'll apply. So we close it. It's still loaded. It's still there. We've just closed the dialog, so we're not looking at it. And we're going to go ahead and go forward with our copying operation. And we're going to choose a folder to copy our photos into. We could make a new folder if we wanted to in this dialog. And we select that folder. And the copying operation goes forth. And Photo Mechanic opens the destination folder as a new contact sheet, which is Photo Mechanic speak for a browser. And we'll go and we'll take a look at this first photo here. I'm going to click on the I button on the slide mount of the photo. And that's going to open my IPTC info dialog, which I could also open by touching the I key on my keyboard. And here we have it. We can read the metadata that we've applied to this photo. Now, the IPTC info dialog is Photo Mechanics one photo at a time metadata editing dialog. Now, it's one photo at a time, but it's still got fancy features and you can still use it to very quickly move metadata from one photo to another or even apply metadata to a small number of photos. But we're going to go ahead and close it. We've confirmed that we've written our Joe Photographer, uh, excuse me, we've written our Joe Photographer template to all these photos. Now, 
let's say that this was a real assignment that Joe Photographer was working on. And Joe now wants to put caption information on all these photos and maybe some keyword information as well. That's the same for all of the photos in this folder. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to select them all again. And this time we're going to use command in the I key and we're going to bring up the IPTC stationary pad again. And we're going to clear it. Now, all of the fields are empty and all these little tick boxes that we see to the left of all the fields, there we go, are cleared. Okay? So we'll go in our caption, and if you remember, Joe Photographer's template already has Joe Photographer's byline at the end of the caption. So we'll type in a caption here that might apply to all the photos in this folder. Like so. And we'll remember to leave a space at the end just to make sure there's a space between that sentence and the sentence that says photo by Joe Photographer. And you'll notice that as we have done this, where's my highlighter? There we go. As we have done this, the tick box beside this field has ticked itself. I don't know if that's a word. It's selected in any case. That means that this field is active, and it means that whatever we've written in this field will overwrite whatever is in the corresponding field in the target photos, if indeed there is any metadata in that field at all. Now, we don't actually want to do that because Joe put his byline at the bottom of the caption in the template. So in the caption field, in the stationary pad, we have actually the choice. We can replace what we find in that field, we can prepend what we find in that field, or we can append what we find in that field we're going to choose prefix or prepend, and that will take the caption that I've just written here and add it to the caption field in front of the Joe Photographer caption on all the pictures that are selected. Now, none of the other fields have anything in them, and none of the other fields have their tick box ticked, which means they're inactive. They won't do anything to existing data in the fields. Now, if you leave a field blank and take its tick box, it'll blank the field in the target. Now, we have the ability to append to fields. In the caption field, we have the ability to prepend or append or replace. In the description writer or caption writer field, we have the ability to append. And in the keyword field, we have the ability to append. Now, keywords doesn't matter what order they're in, so appending is all we need. And frankly, in the caption writer field, I have never seen a photo that had two caption writers listed. I don't know why that feature is there. In all the rest of the fields, you either overwrite or you don't. Those are your choices. Now, I selected all these pictures before I opened this dialog. So I can do apply IPT, IPT stationary pad to selected, and it will do just exactly that. Or I can close the pad, and it's closed, but it's loaded. And I can go back to the contact sheet view, and I can right click, and I can choose apply IPTC stationary. And do, are you sure you want to? Yes, I am. And there's also a keyboard command that applies the stationary. So now we've done this, and in these two steps, we're three-quarters of the way, probably, at least two-thirds of the way, to having all of our photos captioned and ready to go. If we look at any given photo, we now have the standing caption for all the photos applied to every photo. And we could have applied some keywords in that operation as well. We're going to do another video on keywording later. Keywording is a complicated subject all of its own, and I have to admit that I've not paid very much attention to it up to this point, and it deserves its own video, and it deserves its own discussion. Keywording is usually done by an archivist 
who's in charge of putting pictures into a digital asset management system, but most photographers are their own archivist. So for most of you, you're going to have to learn to deal with keywording as well. You can live in a keyword-free environment, and indeed I did for many years, or in other cases, people do a lot of keywording and very little captioning, and that's okay too. You just have to determine what's right for you. Now, as our workflow progresses for these pictures, Joe would probably go in individually and he'd press the I button or press the I key and do individual captions for each picture. We could say this runner is participating in the metadata marathon. The space, quick check for typos. Okay, fine, good. Now, in this dialog, the one at a time IPTC info dialog, we have a preview picture and we have a set of buttons. We can save in advance, which I'll do, and that will apply that photo to the, that caption to the runner photo and move us up to the lady in the hat. We can just navigate, we can advance and go backwards. We have the Save, Upload, and Advance button, which combines photo mechanic functionality into a batch where you can apply a caption to a photo and automatically start the upload process for that photo to upload it to an FTP server or a service that Photo Mechanic has an integration with. And yes, indeed, in that operation, in addition to changing the specs of the file and resizing it or whatever you might want to do with it, you can also apply more metadata. So if you are sending a picture to a certain client and you have some bit of metadata that you want to send to that client, you can automate that and do it all in one great big gigantic button here. And I'm going to admit to you right now, I've never used that button. The other thing that you can do, however, is you can copy the metadata that you have added to a picture, move to another picture, and paste it down. And now this lady in the hat has got the runner caption attached to her. It's a small wonder that she looks so concerned. Now, as we go across the bottom of the IPTC info dialog, we have the same lightning bolt snapshot button that we saw in the stationary pad. And snapshots and templates are interchangeable between the stationary pad and the IPTC info dialog. That's a good thing. We have the clear button that we've already used that simply clears the dialog and just gives us a clean slate to work from. We have load and save buttons, or save and load, I suppose we should say. Save allows us to save our IPTC template as an XMP file, and load allows us to load an XMP file. Now, you won't use those in day-to-day -day operation in Photo Mechanic because the snapshot function is so much simpler and easier. But what you can do with those MP XMP files is you can use them to transfer templates to other applications that understand XMP files, like Adobe Bridge, or Adobe Photoshop, or you can send an XMP file to somebody else who uses Photo Mechanic or any of those other programs. This way a client can work out a template caption with his own keywords and copyright and rights usage information and, and special fields that he, and she, he or she wants used and send that template to a photographer for a certain assignment the photographer can go ahead and use that template easily and just fill in what is needed and turn in pictures that are consistent with the client specifications. That's a really powerful feature. And since right above it, we have the copyright field, I'm going to digress for just a second and show you something about this little copyright symbol. Now, some people say that the copyright symbol is the only legally acceptable way of indicating that you have a copyright. That is not at all true. 
the copyright law says that the string copyright will work and a parenthesis and a C and a close parenthesis will also work. And sometimes if you type parenthesis C, close parenthesis, an application will change that to the copyright symbol for you. Photomechanic doesn't do that, so here's the tip. In Photomechanic for Mac, Option and the G key, which is actually a Mac operating system thing, will give you the copyright symbol. On a Windows machine, I would go ahead and use the character map that's available in your system tools folder to accomplish the same thing. There is a keystroke in Windows. It's the Alt key, and while you're holding the Alt key down, you type the numerical sequence, sequence 0196, and you get the copyright symbol. The problem with that is that the numerical sequence has to be done on a numeric keypad. And if you're on a laptop, the chances are pretty good that it doesn't have it. And then different laptop brands have different keystrokes, and it all just makes your head hurt. Thus my advice to go ahead and use the character uh, map from your system tools folder. As we go across the bottom, we have the next button, which is the job button. This is an interesting and somewhat arcane dialogue that does some cool metadata stuff. What the job dialogue does is it allows you to input name and contact information for clients and photographers, photographer principally being you. However, you can have three different employees that you can enter into this dialogue. And it's the same deal for the client. You enter the main client's name, but the client can have three employees. And as you can see, as I mouse over these dialogues, there we go, I get a little message that says, this is represented by the variable, and it says the name of the variable. So all of this thing, all this dialogue does is it enters information that we can then use to apply in variables. To captions either through this dialogue or through the IPTC stationary dialogue. Now, like everything else in Photo Mechanic, we can do snapshots. So we can essentially make a contact book by saving different snapshots for different people in our client and photographer sections. We'll close that for a moment. We have a button, and again, this is one that I have never used that says apply IPTC stationary pad. I suppose if you had information loaded in your stationary pad for some particular field and you wanted to apply it on a picture by picture basis, you could do that with that button. It's another one that I've just never used. Now we have variables. Variables are a really interesting feature of photo mechanic. What a variable is, is a string usually delimited by some sort of punctuation that is substituted for something else by a program. The way it works in photo mechanic is you put your cursor somewhere in your caption or any, in your metadata anywhere. I'm going to take the object name field right here. And you go to your variables, you find a variable, and you double click it. I just double clicked the variable file name base. And as you can see, it's entered into the field between curly brackets, and the, and the variable is literally file name base. What file name base does is it takes the file name of your photo minus the extension and puts it in this field. As soon as you OK and apply the contents of this dialog to this picture, that substitution is made. Here we'll do it. So we've OK'd that. We'll pull it back up again. And as if by magic, file name base has now turned into the file name of that photo minus 
the .jpg. Now, I'm going to go ahead and clear this, and I will bring up another template, Demo for Client with Variables. Now, this template has variables in it in a bunch of places. It's got variables in the caption. It's got variables in the transref field. And here, in rights usage terms, we have a sentence that is going to say that demo client, whoever he is, wherever he lives, in whatever city, with whatever phone number, would, if this was real rather than a demo, be issued worldwide rights to do certain stuff for a certain period with this image. We'll go ahead and apply this template to Our Lady. And we'll go back and we'll open it up. And we can see that we have filled in all these values that refer to this client with the information that we made active in the job dialog. So now our rights usage term field says demo, Sam client, 123 Main Street, whatever, 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 would be issued a worldwide license to do stuff with this photo. That is a really powerful time-saving feature in Photo Mechanic. Now remember at the beginning, I said that we were pretending to go to our camera card and we were copying photos off the camera card selectively because we didn't copy all of the photos. We deselected a couple, so we edited our photos when we did that. What's our other alternative? Our other alternative is the ingest dialog. Go to File, go to Ingest, and we bring up this dialog box, which looks a little tiny bit like the import dialog in Adobe Lightroom. Now, typically, ingest is used with disks. Its cousin, live ingest, can also be used with a hot folder, which means it can be used with tethering or wireless cameras. But in general, ingest is used with disks, and if we actually had a disk inserted in this computer, we would see it right here in this dialog. Ingest has a wonderful feature called incremental ingest, which means you can shoot some pictures on a disk, ingest them to your local computer, put the disk back in the camera, shoot some more pictures on it, and ingest them incrementally, and Photo Mechanic will just add the new ones to the old ones. And ingest can do all kinds of operations while it is doing this ingesting, including, yes, you know it had to be, apply IPT stationary pad to photos on ingest, which is what we did when we copied, except we have another option. In the ingest dialog, we have this radio button. Use local IPTC stationary or use global IPTC stationary. What that is, is local IPTC stationary is the IPTC stationary that was recorded into a snapshot in the ingest dialog. Global IPTC stationary is whatever is loaded on your IPTC stationary pad at the moment. The usefulness of this is by checking the local radio button and by making snapshots of your ingest dialog, you can record and save different IPTC stationary that you can call up by just calling up the snapshot. Now, this feature was originally developed for use in photographing sporting events. Much in Photo Mechanic is oriented towards people who photograph professional sports. And there may be multiple photographers shooting an event. And by using this feature, you can use snapshots for each photographer and apply IPC stationary accordingly. Now, maybe you don't shoot the NFL, Maybe you're a studio photographer, you can do the same thing and have different baseline metadata for different clients. Choose a different snapshot 
for each client and apply metadata accordingly. Or you can use the other radio button and use the global IPTC stationary, which is whatever is loaded on your IPTC stationary pad at the moment. Now you may ask, are there other ways to apply metadata to multiple pictures at once in Photo Mechanic? Of course there are. If I select a picture and I right click to bring up the context menu, I have the item that applies my IPT stationary. We've already looked at that. Just below it, I have IPTC snapshot and two options, take and paste. So I'm going to take a snapshot from that picture and I'm going to select some more pictures and I'm going to go back to IPTC snapshot and I can choose paste and I get a flyout which shows me all of the caption all of the captions that I have taken an IPTC snapshot of in a current session I choose the one I want I do paste, I OK the dialog, and there you have it. Now this runner caption, which is just spreading like a weed here, is applied to these several pictures that don't have a runner on them. Now, if we go to, we'll select a couple of pictures for the sake of argument. If we go to the Tools pull down in the main menu of Photo Mechanic, we can find some more metadata related tools that we can use. We have adjust capture dates and times of photos. This is yet another feature that was originally developed for covering sporting events. What this does is it allows you to adjust the capture times in your metadata and you can select between your IPTC metadata, your EXIF metadata, your XMP metadata, or the original file metadata. And you can change the capture times. And it's a very clever dialog. Its main function is to allow you to synchronize caption times. So if you use multiple cameras yourself or if you have multiple photographers working on a given event, you can synchronize caption times. Then you can sort by capture time. And you have an exact chronological representation of the event. Very cool. Update IPTC XMP is a synchronization function that allows you to reconcile any differences between the IPTC metadata that exists in the old IIM format in your file or IPTC metadata that exists in the modern XMP format. It's a very rare thing that you would ever have to use this but it's the only program that I know of that does a comprehensive job of synchronizing those two examples of the metadata if they happen to get out of whack. Convert IPTC text encodings does exactly what it says, and you can probably live a long and productive career without ever having to use it. Delete metadata is something that you might actually use, particularly if you're working on the web, if you're running a website, or if you're preparing photos for the web. It brings up this dialog box, which is a simple row of tick boxes. The information that you tick will be deleted. The information that is unticked will be spared. Now, I've just arranged it in the more likely way where you do not delete your IPTC metadata, in this case they're referring to IPTC IIM metadata, or your XMP metadata, which also includes your IPTC metadata, which includes copyright management information, which is protected by law. You don't want to accidentally delete that if you can possibly avoid it. It's also a karmic thing. Uh, it's just not a, a good or ethical thing to be erasing somebody else's uh, copyright information. Now, you can erase your own copyright information from your own picture, but you can also hit yourself in the knee with a ball-peen hammer. You can, but the question is, why would you want to do it? In any case, 
EXIF metadata includes a thumbnail or maybe multiple thumbnails. And by the time you're getting a picture ready for the web, it's just wasted space, as is most of the rest of this stuff. And you can use this dialog to delete metadata that you don't want from your pictures. Now, there is a caution here, and it says this operation is irreversible. Make sure you are working with duplicate photos. That's really, really good advice. And in a normal workflow, by the time you're making photos for output, you will have copied them in any case. But don't ever erase information that might be important to you later from the copy of a photo that you're going to keep. Similarly, you obviously wouldn't want to resize it or resave it. And funny thing, I should mention that because if we go back to our photos, we go back to the right-click menu again, we have Save Selected Photos As. That brings up this dialog, which is germane to working on the web because it allows us to save a new copy of the photo. And in the most common configuration, we're going to save a JPEG. Yep, we've got snapshots, so we will pull up this one, 2048 Web JPEGs, which scales the photo to fit in the bounding box that's 2048 pixels high and wide. So in other words, the picture will be 2048 pixels on the long dimension, and that's actually a fairly common dimension for the largest instance of a photo in a web CMS. We could apply cropping with the Photo Mechanic Crop Tool or not. We can JPEG it to whatever sort of quality we desire. We have an option to change the subsample chroma or chroma subsampling is the way it's usually put. So we have a little finer control over uh, how we're going to make our JPEG, which is useful for the web. And hey, guess what we have here? Apply IPTC stationary. So on the way out the door, if we're working with a web-based client, we could apply IPTC stationary, for instance, to change whatever's in the rights usage field to a rights usage statement that says that the widget company has been uh, granted a one-year web license to use this particular picture. And I believe that we have, here we go, I believe we even have a demo template that says just exactly that. There we go. This is a demo IPTC stationary pad template that changes the rights usage terms, doesn't touch any other, any other field, changes the rights usage terms to a rights usage statement that's specific to that particular web-oriented customer. We hit the button, and we can save our files, and we have options to put our new files in a new folder, to name our new files in a certain way, with sequential numbering or whatever. Uh, it's photo mechanic. It does all kinds of stuff. Now, we could say that we're going to send these photos directly to a web CMS or directly to some other uh, client, and we're going to FTP them. And we can do FTP photos as which brings up the, F, the file uploader dialog. And in the file uploader dialog, we can choose between FTPing and sending to various services that Photo Mechanic has integrations with, things like Photo Shelter or Flickr or Zenfolio. And once again, in this dialog, guess what? We have options that we can use to transform our files and we have apply IPTC stationary and a button to bring up the pad. So you can integrate doing metadata operations with doing file management operations in Photo Mechanic. Basically, it saves a lot of time. Everything in this program is beautifully designed to operate in the least number of steps to get the job done for you. Now, that also means that these tools 
are really pretty powerful. So you have to be a little bit careful about using them. This one, for example, and the Save As dialog don't have a clear or return to default button. That's a word of warning. And I know that in my Save As dialog box, I dealt with that by making a template that returns the values to what I consider to be a default. Now, if we go to the Edit pull-down in the main menu and go down to Settings, we get another flyout menu that has another whole bevy of metadata-related options in Photo Mechanic. And I'm not going to go into them in great detail because we just don't have time. There will be more Photo Mechanic videos and more posts as people request them about specific features in Photo Mechanic. But we'll just take a quick look at these. We have Set Autocomplete. This allows us to customize our Type Ahead Autocomplete function as we type in any of our metadata dialogs in Photo Mechanic. We have set code replacements. Code replacements are very interesting. They are strings that we can tell Photo Mechanic to watch for and replace with other text. This again was originally developed for people who photograph sports. The idea was that you could input a roster for a sports team, including positions that people play and maybe even some descriptive text, and you could call them into your captions by merely typing the person's number or an abbreviation for the team. You could set, for example, an abbreviation for Miami Heat number three, and Photo Mechanic would automatically turn that into Dwayne Wade. And if you've ever had to type Dwayne Wade's name 20 times in an evening, you know what a godsend that would be. If you're working for a company and your CEO's last name is 15 characters and he is always referred to as Widget Co. CEO, whatever his name might be, you could change the string CEO to be that string about your chief executive officer and save yourself misspelling his name, which would be really embarrassing. That is a pretty cool feature. And let's see what else we have in here. We can do set text info. What that does is it allows us to customize the display of EXIF metadata so that we could have, for example, GPS coordinates up near the top of the EXIF metadata, or in my case, I wanted to know the dimensions of the file near the top of the EXIF metadata. So I used that function to tell me that this file is 3,264 pixels wide, and it's 6.2 megs on the disk. And finally, we have set sequence variable. This could be used in a caption if we wanted to increment a number as we went along in the caption or maybe in the transref job number field. Mostly it's used when renaming files so that you start at the right number, whether it's 1 or 18 or 2023. You can rename files sequentially, and this dialog allows you to set the starting number. And the final metadata related dialog in this menu is the job dialog that we've already looked at. So there you have it. There is an overview of working with metadata in Photo Mechanic. Once again, I'm Carl Seibert. Please hit the comments or contact me on LinkedIn or Twitter. And until next time, mind your metadata.